Now, what happens on a physiological level that leads to muscle protein synthesis? Okay, it's important to wrap your head around this concept here because we're going to be speaking about nutrition strategies that can promote this growth response and understanding physiology is important. So within our body, okay, within our muscle cells, we have these two main enzymes okay, or protein complexes. We have one which is named mTOR or mechanistic target of rapamycin. Okay, I'm not going to explain that any further. We're just going to leave it at that. We also have another one which is termed AMPK or AMP activated protein kinase. Now, as you can see, the graphics above show that mTOR is activated with resistance training, whereas AMPK is activated with, let's say, aerobic training. So if we are to increase levels of muscle protein synthesis in the body, our first point of call needs to be targeting the enzyme mTOR because mTOR integrates all signals for growth, whether nutrition signals or training signals, okay, all signals for growth, and organizes hypertrophy within its cell, right? So this is what happens when mTOR gets activated. We get an increase in muscle protein synthesis, and we also get an increase in ribosomal biogenesis. Now, to dive into this topic a little further, Muscle protein synthesis predominantly occurs in what we call a ribosome, which is in a cell. Okay, so what you're looking at on screen here, think about, think about it as a cell. As you can see, under the line, or over the line, we have the extracellular space. Under the line, we have the intracellular space inside the cell. Okay, Inside the cell, we have these organelles of these structures called ribosomes. And this is where the creation of proteins takes place. Now, biogenesis refers to the creation of more ribosomes, the synthesis of more ribosomes. So if we have more ribosomes within a cell, we have a greater capacity to build muscle. Think about it this way. The ribosome is the factory where proteins are getting built. You've got more factories in a cell, you've got a greater capacity to build proteins. So that is mTOR's main roles in the body, or at least the roles that we will be concerned about today. Okay. On the other hand, we have AMPK, which we can term an energy sensor, the energy sensor of the cell. Its role is to detect energy levels, which we're going to get to soon. Okay. If it becomes activated, it increases oxidative capacity, which is an aerobic adaptation, and mitochondrial biogenesis. So you may have heard of the term mitochondrial or mitochondria. Okay. The powerhouse of the cell, okay, the structure in the cell that creates energy. Again, biogenesis referring to the synthesis of more mitochondria, another aerobic adaptation. Now, what we need to understand here is that there is interplay between the two enzymes, okay, and AMPK actually has the ability, sorry, to blunt mTOR, as you can see there, okay. Now, this is important to know because this will set us up for what we're going to be learning in future slides. So if we take it a step further, I mentioned AMPK detects energy levels within the cell. Okay, As you can see here, we have high ATP, low AMP. Now remember, when ATP gets broken down, so ATP is the energy currency of our cells. Okay, you may have heard of this before. Our body runs on ATP. Okay, Our body, which is made up of trillions of cells, require ATP to function. Once ATP, ATP gets broken down and used for energy, it gets converted into other similar forms, known as ADP and AMP. If we have a high amount of ATP within our cells and a low amount of AMP, well, AMPK registers that, okay? And it doesn't get activated, okay? Actually gets blunted, as you can see there. And of, of course, calories will uh, influence the amount of ATP that we have available. Now, if AMPK gets blunted, well, that's a good thing because then it will not be blunting mTOR. Remember, I said in the earlier slide, 
if AMPK is activated, it has the ability to blunt mTOR's processes. Okay, think about it this way. If energy levels in the cell are low, which I'm going to get to soon, it is not desirable for your body to continue promoting energy expensive processes. Now, mTOR, remember, activates protein synthesis, and protein synthesis itself is an energy expensive process, as you can see there. It requires ATP to add an amino acid to a chain of amino acids and thus build a protein. Okay? So if we have high AMP levels, as you can see now, that ratio has changed. If we have high AMP to low ATP, okay, AMPK registers that as a low energy availability within the cell because you're breaking down a lot of ATP, which means you now have more AMP than you have ATP. That's not a good thing. AMPK goes up. It gets upregulated. From there, it continues or it proceeds to blunt mTOR, and that's when we get the halting of anabolic processes. Okay, so that is the interplay. That's an overview of the interplay between mTOR and AMPK. And in this presentation, we're going to speak about strategies that can upregulate mTOR and get this process of protein synthesis occurring. Remember, just to recap, protein synthesis refers to adding amino acids to a chain. Okay, once that chain is big enough, we get a protein. Okay, that protein will then make its way into you know its its uh, selected area in the muscle fiber and and um, proceed to grow the fiber. That the creation of these proteins that are just chains of amino acids happens inside the ribosome and is activated, this process is activated by mTOR. So what can we do from a nutrition standpoint to influence this process in a positive manner? Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Martin from JPS Health and Fitness and unfortunately that's all we have time for today. This was a short snippet of a Nutrition for Muscle Growth lecture from our all new Hypertrophy Summit. If you want to know more about the summit, which contains 10 different presentations from leading experts in the fitness industry, see the description in the bio and stay tuned for next week's video.